Yo, what's up guys, it's MMA Analyst here to give you my recap for UFC on Fox 5. Pretty good night of fights. Um, I was going to say something. Oh yeah, the sound is terrible. Because my mic's over here, wasn't working. So yeah. So you guys get, you know, this sound here. But anyways, let's get right down to it. Main event, Ben Henderson versus Nate Diaz. It is what a lot of people thought would happen. Uh, you know, and what I th thought would happen as long as Ben came to really just close the distance and do his thing. Um, the one thing that he I implemented really well was the leg kicks, the leg kicks, uh, leg punches. What was up with that? Throwing a punch? One time he threw the punch and it actually took his leg out. Anyways, um, I liked his corner at the end of the one round. Ben kind of went to his corner with that little nick with the little Diaz sway where he's kind of like, What's up now, huh? And they were like, All right, son, slow down. Don't put yourself in any leg locks. There's no reason to play his game. He's he's in slow mo. All that. The corner was good. And then on the other side, you had Nate's corner, who I think is, is a really good fighter, but woo! That corner work is not really, you know. You know what I'm saying? It was pretty weak. Uh, but yeah, you know, Nate, with Ben on his game plan, Nate didn't really have much of a shot because Ben is just too strong, too well-rounded a fighter, too big, and yeah, too good a wrestler. So good work to Ben Henderson. Pretty much um, won every single round. Dropped Nate a few times. Nate gave up his back a lot. Very confident in his jujitsu as he should be to get out of situations. But yeah, good win for Ben Henderson. All right, next fight. Alexander Gustafson versus Mauricio Shobanua. Huh. All right, all right. I will say one thing. It's that uh, Shogun didn't look horrible. He actually looked a lot better in this loss than he did in his win against um, Brandon Barra. But let's get to Alex. Alex did his thing, you know. Um, I think the first round, I think it was actually he got he slipped. It looked like he hit him, and then he landed, and uh, that was actually a slip. But Alex was good, man. Everything he did was, was working. He used his height and distance. He moved in and out really well. Uh, I think he's got a pretty solid chin on him too. There were some solid shots that would have probably not knocked out but kind of like been that first step towards Shogun maybe winning via Nako. But Gustafson took some serious shots. He had one that kind of hit him behind the ear um, in, in transition. You know, just he did his thing. Do I think Gustafson can beat uh, John Jones? Nah, not really. And by not really, I just don't see it. <clears throat> uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens when the fight goes down. But um, I do want these fights to happen. I want normal things to happen. I don't want super unnecessary super fights. Gustafson's the next challenger. Uh, John Jones is the champ. They should fight at welterweight. Hendricks is definitely, you know, the, the should get the next title shot. Nick Diaz is the money title shot. For for Juris St. Pierre and to be honest, probably the easier of the two fights, just because of the wrestling situation. People calm down, chill back. All right, Nick Diaz is my top three favorite fighters. I'm just saying, stylistic, it looks like Henderson would be a much more difficult problem because he can finish you with that one punch, and Diaz wants to accumulate it. And if a wrestler doesn't want to let you accumulate strikes, he's gonna put you on your back. Anyways, we don't need to see Juris St. Pierre murder. Uh, get murdered by by Anderson Silva. We don't need that. So the point is, I just want things to kind of move. You know, then you got obviously you got Roy McDonald. You know, same thing. Welterweight situation is looking pretty good right now. Anyways, so Gustafson, congratulations. Um, I think his only loss was to to Davis. Um, to a couple of years ago now, and I remember that fight. He pretty much got owned. But he has improved vastly in his stand-up, in his game, and just in general. So, 
he's a different fighter today than he was then. But uh, against against uh, John Jones, I don't know. But we'll see. All right. Rory McDonald versus BJ Penn. All right. Time to retire. All right. It's time. You already retired before. Then you came back. You, you know, welterweight again. Like your welterweight situation has never been the greatest. And uh, it's just another welterweight loss. You know, John Fitch, that was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, beating Matt Hughes a couple times, that's good. You know, George St. Pierre, he's one of the toughest. It's not like you're fighting bums, so let's, let's get it clear. At welterweight, if you fought the average dudes, you probably would win most of your fights. But only fighting contenders at welterweight, it's kind of like the UFC is like, all right, well, obviously he's a big name, so he can't fight. No, nah, it's kind of like, it's exactly like, he's a big name. So we can't bring BJ Penn to the welterweight division so that he can fight, you know, some guy who's oh, far away from the spotlight. Somebody who's not going to be branded in the future. You know, this is a Rory McDonald win over BJ Penn. That's, that means more for his UFC hype train in the future. Not uh, unwarranted, but the hype train that they are building, and that's picking up steam, this is the biggest thing for him. A solid win over BJ Penn, even if BJ Penn is, uh, you know, supposed to be at 155. Uh, but anyways, so, good win for Roy McDonald. They absolutely destroyed him. On the feet, the second round, whoo! That was crazy, man. He was my, wow. He was a body shot. Oh, he's like, ah, he's there. Yeah, you know, luckily BJ knows how to box. A lot of people they, they 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 do Muay Thai stance or they just you know just average wannabe MMA fighter stance, and they got their hands all up here and their body's all open. And then when they get hurt, they lower it and then their head's all open. But BJ's tight, so he's got you can't really see my elbow. He's got his elbow covering the ribs and then his hand. He's good up here. So when he got ah that hurt. But he doesn't have to completely expose his head. He also has a one hell of a jaw, a good chin. Tough. Tough guy. That's the only reason why he didn't get finished in that second round. And he's not really, you know, a lot of people want to question his heart. I don't think he's a quitter. Uh, maybe in training camp he doesn't train as good as he needs to train. But uh, in, in the cage he rarely, if ever, just says, all right, you know what, let me get out of here. So, uh, mad props to BJ Penn. But, you know, let's be honest here. Unless you're going to fight up at lightweight... Which is even difficult for you now. Uh, you know, it might be time to do your thing, right? You got money. You had money. You've never had an issue. You've never needed to fight. That's one of the reasons I really respect BJ Penn. He's not one of these guys like, I got to fight or else I'm not going to be able to eat, you know, or something like that. Or He just fights because he's a fighter. Um, and that's probably why he's still fighting. That's how it works. Rory McDonald, uh, like I said, welterweight division is tough. Mike Swing, Matt Brown. All right, look. All right, look. That would have sounded really good in the mic because it would sound normal. Now it's probably here on Equity. Okay, Matt Brown, congratulations, my man. All right, you have done what very few have been able to do in the UFC. And that's vastly improve. Vastly improve. You know, like there's people, and not from a position of you were, you were good and now you're better. But, like, you were whack. And now you're pretty damn good. Now, it's only against Swick, but Swick is, I mean, it's not like Swick is top five or anything, but that's a bit, you destroyed him. And that's the thing, he didn't come on here and just throw a couple punches and knock him out. No. He, he, you know, he was aggressive on the feet. He had a nice boxing stance. Like, he, you know, he was, he was together. He wasn't this wild brawler. Moved in, uh, I would say, pretty methodically with the strikes, tied him up. You know, <clears throat> when he went to the ground, you know, one submission to the next. I forgot what this first submission was, but it was pretty... Oh, hey, the darts, which started pretty far. Like, it was not even anywhere near at the beginning. Locked that up. Then from the darts almost directly into a triangle. Obviously, there's some transitioning in between, but to a pretty solid triangle. Got back to his feet. Rocked him. I'm just saying, man. You know, I, I respect Matt Brown. For, for not falling into the trap, okay? A lot of UFC fighters, especially when the UFC likes them, they fall into a trap where they know 
I'm a, I've been in the UFC. I can lose. I can go somewhere else and win. I can come back. Or I can stay in the UFC. As long as I win one out of every five fights, I'll be all right. And Matt Brown, you know. Now, also, the, the other situation is, you know, he fought Ricardo and made a tough fight. Chris Lytle, tough fight. Um, Seth Pazinski, yeah. Okay, anyways. Brian Foster, okay. But anyways, the point is, it's not like he was fighting the bummiest of bums. Uh, but it doesn't matter. The point is, him as a fighter, he has greatly improved. And I like seeing fighters improve. I mean, the guy's 16 and 11 right now. You know what I mean? You know, he was 12 and 11 at the beginning of 2012. He's on a four-fight winning streak. Um, you know, I gotta give the dude mad props. I always harp on Matt Brown because I just, you know, I don't like when fighters get that special treatment because of whatever. I don't like spe unless you get the special treatment because you're the best. I don't like special treatment, all right? I don't like exciter, f excitement fighter special treatment. I don't like Dana White's buddy special treatment. I don't like, the only special treatment I like is when you are amazing and they recognize that and they give you special treatment for that or step up last minute. All right, I stepped up last minute, I lost. But we're gonna remember you though, you know what I mean? We're not gonna cut you because you, you know, I, I, I can dig that too, but anyways, Congratulations, Matt Brown. You really worked Mike Swick. Like I said, it's not like he just went out there and somehow good work. Eves Edwards, solid win over Jeremy Stevens. I was rooting for Eves, um, and he got that win. I did pick against him, but you know he got that win. A Sun Cow, uh, you know, solid win. Um, Ramsey the Gem, good win. Crookshank, woo! Wow, my man was out there just going crazy with the kicks. Uh, it looked like you know he was out there hitting a punching bag. Um, good win for Trillo over Loveser. Uh, Dennis Seaver, the win was expected. Um, John, uh, Scott Jorgensen, the win was expected, but there's still a good win. So there you go. UFC on Fox 5. What's next? Don't I have like two, two cards in two days? Oh my god. You, you know, because of where the world, in the world, Australia is. It's like they're on the same day, December 15th. They got two events. The Ultimate Fighter Finale. Let's see what's on this. All right, Sideropolis, Pearson. All right, I can deal with that. Hector Lombard versus Polaris. Woo! I like that. I, I really like that. Chad Mendez versus Diaz. I can deal with that. Procryance Beltran. Okay, okay. Bazinski Pierce. I don't know. I'm good done with that. All right. Okay, hey, it's not that bad. The same day, basically. Roy Nelson, Mitchell. Okay. Mike Ricci versus. Okay. The tough finale competition. All right, now. Pat Berry versus Shane Dozario. I'm gonna get that. Melville back against Varner. I can deal with that. Brookins versus Poirier. That's a good fight. James Head versus Pyle. I, I, I can get behind that. Wahlberger Catone. That's all right. Um. Not that bad. What's after that? Do, I mean, do we have like three more events in December? Good God. <clears throat> One, two, three. Yeah, then we have DeSantos versus Velasquez. The rematch. Anyways, it looks like I'm going to be busy in December. Damn, that's crazy. Every May, it's important. Oh! Yo. I'm just saying, yo. Pacquiao versus Marquez for was crazy. You know, I'm not going to get into it too much. But because of the history that exists in boxing, not just the history of the whole sport, but like the history of just different fights. You know, like when you have these guys fight four times and, you know, uh, Marquez got robbed a solid one time, probably two times. Then they fight a fourth time, and like you have all the background of all the stuff with, with what's happening with Pacquiao and and and, and what could be happening, whatever with, with what's the name Floyd Mayweather, Jr. And then you just have like the skill level of striking. 
Like, you know, like, that, that, like, these guys are making mad loot. So, you know, these guys are tip-top condition. These guys could go out there and brawl if they wanted to for 12 rounds and, 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 you know, break a little bit of a sweat. I'm telling you, man, <clears throat> not many things, and this is from somebody who's a huge, obviously, MMA fan. Not many things in MMA can can compete with Pacquiao like that story. It's not it's not even the Rocky story, but that just like that story of Pacquiao Marquez. Pacquiao Marquez, the fourth time Marquez gets that justice, flatlines dude, face plant. Not things can compete with that, man. Not many things. I'm not saying that. Boxing's got a, a million of these storylines, but I'll be damned if just it's just some beautiful real life storytelling that goes on in boxing. And and really almost all major sports. I want y'all to tell me whoever stuck around this long, what are the real life storytelling, you know, Oscar worthy best movie of the year worthy stories in MMA. What are the stories uh, between fighters, fights, trilogies, uh, matchups that could be where there's just true, not contrived Zufa hype, but true hype where you don't have to hype it up, you don't have to even promote it. You could just say, This is happening. And Everybody in the sport would be like, oh my god, this this is it. Obviously, we have... And I'm going to say, I don't even think Anderson Silver vs. GSP is one of those. So, you know, take that out. In the past, you had moments that could have been like Fedor versus Randy Couture, Fedor versus Lesnar. You had moments in Pride that were, that were, uh, Rampage Jackson versus... Vanderlei Silva, Vanderlei Silva versus Chuck Liddell, the tournaments in Pride. So they did exist. Do they exist now? If so, what are they? Comment. I don't even ask for comments, but I'm wondering, MMA fans, what out there is just such an amazing story where people will be talking about it for for you know 30 years from now? Because what happened yesterday? And the story of Marquez and Pacquiao, that's going to be talked about for a long time. What in MMA is happening today that 20 years from now, 30 years from now, just like what was happening in the 80s with, you know, with some boxers. Like boxing doesn't forget where it was before, right? Like, so you tell me, guys. Tell me what it is. I'm not saying it's not there. I'm saying tell me what it is. MMA, it's important. Peace.